The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Let's go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Tuesday, September 8th. 2020 season 16 episode number 18 welcome to the latest edition of the break i am live back here in the swbc mortgage studios at the star my co-host joining me nick eatman he is here at the star as well uh we got dave hellman at his home amber garcia at her home and we're bringing all this to you guys bringing all this together uh it is our first day of daily shows uh we'll be on every day at 11 30 a.m on DallasCowboys.com and all Dallas Cowboys platforms. And I'm so happy to be back. It is football season. How's everybody doing today? Doing great, Derek. Good. Thrilled awesome. to be here. Nick, why don't you ever say anything great. when I say, how are you doing? Is it just like you're just in a mood today or everything good? Uh, I guess I am in a mood today, but uh, I, I don't know. I'm just waiting on everybody. Sometimes I do. I do say, good, doing great, wonderful. I'm awesome. <laughs> Derek, thank you. You guys got it. I'm trying to figure out. Go ahead. Who's out. Uh, I, I see somebody on the field. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but I do see someone out here working out. And I'm trying to figure out who that uh, is. But, so you're um, spying just, right now. You know, on this Tuesday day off. Yeah. Not really supposed to do see, that. See, this is, we're getting, fans are getting an opportunity right now to see how Nick gets his information to be uh, the guy that just pro- <laughs> prognosticates all the stuff that's going to happen. Like last week, he threw a little nug- a couple nuggets on us that, uh, that we all kind of just glossed over. And then, of course, when the rosters came out, it was like, wow, Nick, did you know something? He's like, no, no, I didn't know anything. So, uh, but let's talk no. about that. I, I didn't know. What I saw was just like Dave saw, just like Amber and Derek, you guys saw. Darian Thompson was starting over Ha Ha Clinton Dix, so if he if he's not starting and he's already been cut before by two other teams, including Washington, who didn't want him, so you know that didn't seem good to me. Sean Lee hadn't practiced since 2007, it seems like. So <laughs> I mean that didn't seem good either. So I don't know. I'm just putting it together. I didn't really know that. I didn't know that they were going to go to IR. I had no idea Lyell was going it's on just IR. One so of, that just I don't was think watching. Anybody practice. saw that yeah. coming? No. Well. Just one of the many reasons why fans should tune in here to the break because you'll get those kind of little nuggets that'll make you think about things, and then you'll see them come true, and you'll be like, wow, I heard that on the break first. Let's start with the the 53-man roster. (laughs) There were a lot of surprises. Well, I shouldn't say there were a lot of surprises. There were some surprises, I guess. Uh, I'll start first with you guys and and just go around and talk about, uh, each one of you talk about kind of as you saw the roster, what was your first thought? If there was a surprise, if it was something that just kind of corroborated what you were already thinking, uh, I just want to get an initial thought from you as you saw the 53-man roster. We'll start first with you, Dave. I think the most surprising thing was uh, just the way that they managed this linebacker situation. I mean, Nick had an inkling that maybe Sean Lee might not be on the roster to start with. Uh, He turned out to be correct, but then you think about, you know, the team cut Joe Thomas and Justin March over the weekend, too. Like, there was a point where they only had, like, two healthy linebackers on the team. Uh, they brought Joe and Justin back, so it's not a big deal. But some of the stuff they did to just fit under the 53-man limit I thought was really interesting. Um, and then, you know, when you see Terrence Steele make the team at offensive tackle, uh, you know, five offensive tackles is a lot. You kind of had a feeling Lyle might not be long for the roster either. So those were, those were probably the two big Amber. things. I don't really have much to add to that. Honestly, as the roster stands right now, uh, there's nothing that really sur- surprises me aside from what the de- what they did with the linebackers. But now, knowing or seeing how it ended up, it makes sense the way they decided to do things there. The only biggest surprise to me was the whole Lyle Collins thing. We, we kept hearing uh, Mike McCarthy talking about him and just saying that it wasn't anything long-term. And it might not be. I mean, I think they... They have, what, three weeks until they're available to come back? So I'm just curious to see how it really affects the the O-line here once they start playing an actual game. Because in practice, 
you you can't really evaluate those kinds of things. I mean, they make plays, and then you see Dak Prescott getting pressure, but then it's like, okay, they can't really sack him or anything in 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 practice. So I, I just I'm very curious to see how the O line just fully comes together once they get to the real game. Nick, were there any surprises for you on this roster? Yeah, I mean, this is just another example of, you know, without being at training camp, getting to talk to coaches, getting to talk to scouts, you know, just those conversations you normally have. Somebody would have probably told us, hey, Francis Bernard isn't doing as good as you think he is. Because what we see was a guy that was kind of making plays, interceptions, plays behind the line of scrimmage. What we don't see, and I don't know if this is true, but, you know, he might run to the right, get blocked, and there's a 25-yard run up the middle. We don't know some of the things and how he's grasping it. I thought he was making plays um, and to the point where you would want to keep him. But guess what? Once again, a guy gets cut. He doesn't, he, he doesn't get claimed by another team. He's back on the practice squad. Uh, I lost a dollar bet with somebody in the media about that, which I had to Venmo. So, uh, you know, it, I thought he would be gone. But, hey, it is what it is. That's a really – and you're absolutely right, Nick, is like if we were all out in Oxnard, you know, eating dinner next to coaches and scouts, somebody would have been like, pump the sort brakes. Sort of. Pump, yeah, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> on the other pump side, the, yeah. Pump the brakes on Francis Bernard, while at the same time, it's the classic case where like, you know, you, you run into a coach or a scout and they're like, what do you mean C.J. Goodwin's not on the team? Of course he's on the team. Like, we've known that since day one, which, you know, classic case of a guy that everybody wants to overlook who makes his way back to the roster, so... It ha it's a bummer that you don't get to have those conversations with guys in this yeah, environment. And I think the other thing to consider here is that it was it's very difficult based upon how we were able to watch practice without preseason games what the coaches would think about these guys from a special team standpoint. And I think that's one of the things when you start looking at some of the guys that are not the starter caliber players but some of the guys that are a little bit farther down the depth chart – it, uh, special teams, I'm sure, has a lot to play, uh, plays in a lot there. And so it's it's some of those guys that, that may have made it or didn't make it. You wonder if some of that is about the fact of, of what they saw from them in practice and in drills around special teams and what they think they can provide for them from a special teams perspective. Let's go ahead and, uh, and move on to the uh, – I want to dig in a little bit more on these injuries, these guys that are uh, now on IR, Sean Lee, Lyle Collins, Vintel Bryant. Go through and tell me what the injuries are, and obviously they have the three weeks that they will be on IR that after which they could come back. But just talk about their injuries from the standpoint of long term. Is it only a three week type period, or are we talking about longer for some of these guys? Dave, give me a, give me an update of what you know on that. What I really know is that a big difference between Mike McCarthy and Jason Garrett is that it's hard to say for sure, and I mean that's not. That's not to say Jason Garrett was the most forthcoming person in the world, but Mike McCarthy really, really doesn't like to even tell you what might be bothering a guy. Uh, I think from Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones, it, it sounds like it's a hip injury for Lyle. And actually, Mike McCarthy was asked on Monday night whether this is a conditioning thing. Uh, I think there's, there's a rumor going around Twitter that Lyle's on injured reserve because he's out of shape. I don't think I buy that. I don't think you put a guy on injured reserve because he's out of shape. Uh, so it sounds like it's a hip. Um, you know, the fact that he was able to do some things in practice gives me optimism that, you know, in a month, three weeks to a month, he can come back. But I guess we'll see. Um, same thing with, like, I mean, Nick, tell me if I'm missing something. Like, I don't 100% know what Sean Lee is dealing with. <laughs> no. Ventel Bryant was his knee. Uh, Ventel Bryant hurt his knee in practice last weekend. So we know that. But I couldn't tell you what it is with Sean. No, because, you know, this is not anything unusual than from what they've done, kind of a workload management thing at training camp. And so when he wasn't practicing, you, you, you didn't think that was that big a deal because we've seen that at training camp a lot. But then when you get to the point where now that it's like he's just not, you know, not, not ready to go in the games. I mean, that, that's something that, that was surprising to me because, you know, I went back and looked. He actually played 16 games last year on the schedule. It's the first time he's done that in his, in his whole career. So um, the, the, the management workload worked for them last year. So I kind of thought that was going to happen. But when Stephen Jones said, you know, you can put a, a whistle around his neck and a coaching cap and he would be just fine, that kind of made me think that 
that's kind of a role that they're that they're, they have for him. So I'm a, I'm still a little bit confused what's going on with Sean Lee. Do you guys think that Cam Irving is an adequate uh, replacement for Lyle, even on a temporary basis? I'll start with you, Amber. I mean, if they couldn't find any better option out there from the guys that were caught from other teams, uh, I, I just I trust that they did their job evaluating player the best that they possibly could given the circumstances. I don't I don't feel fully comfortable or confident about the whole decision here, but who else was better to fill in the role while Lyle is out? I, I don't I honestly I don't know. He he's a guy that's okay, okay for now, and we'll see how he goes during the game, but is he someone that excites me? Not really. So I'll ask you this, Amber, on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the most concerned, 1 being the least concerned, how concerned are you about this offensive line with now coming out of last year, you've got two offensive line positions that are that you had starters last year that are not back. You've got the center position where Travis Frederick has retired, and now you got, you're going to start the season with your right tackle gone. How concerned are you on a scale of 1 to 10? Uh, I would say seven, seven around there because see with Travis Frederick and Joe Looney did an amazing job. I think he did a, a great job uh, two years ago and he was able to take on that role and, and do good. But even with uh, when Travis was able to come back, we saw the difference that Travis made inside the, the O-line. So you take that element away once again, even though this should mean that um, Joe has gained more experience in these two years that went by. But at the same time, we know how, how in sync the O-line needs to be in order to perform better. So I am concerned, I would say seven, but we just, I, I honestly, honestly, I don't know what to fully expect once they start Dave, playing. Dave, give me your level of concern, one to 10, offensive line. Uh, I'd probably put it at like a four. Um, I, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely concerning. You would prefer Lyle to be there. To answer your question, no, I, I don't feel great about Cam Irving, which it's not anything, you know, I didn't notice anything bad about what he was doing at camp. Obviously, he had an injury, too, that kept him out for a while. It seems like he's been fine since he got back. Uh, the big thing that I'm watching is Brandon Knight. Uh, he hurt his ankle last week in practice right at the tail end of camp. I think he's going to be okay, but it's, I think it's something we need to be watching when they start practicing tomorrow. Um, and, I, and I don't know who the starter would be, but the thing that makes me feel good is that if Cam Irving ain't up to snuff, Brandon Knight is a decent four. I mean, for your fourth tackle to be able to fall back on that, I feel pretty good about it. Uh, I think I've been saying since the spring, like, I'm really not worried about Joe Looney. He was already good enough to, I mean, they got to the playoffs with him as the starter. And the big thing for me with that is I think there's a big difference between year three of Dak Prescott and year five of Dak Prescott in terms of uh, not just commanding the offense, but navigating the pocket and getting rid of the ball. You know, I think Dak got sacked 56 times in 2018 or something crazy like that, 46 times. He dropped that number all the way down to 23 last year. And you just can't convince me that that was all on Travis Frederick coming back. So uh, the right tackle spot, concerning. The center spot, not so much for me. So Nick, level four. of concern? Seven, eight, maybe. Mm. Uh, like, uh, left, left, left tackle, um, I, I think he's healthy. He hasn't practiced. Doesn't, you know, he's one of the best in the league, if not the best. But you know, there's always a little bit of concern with his health. He hasn't done a whole lot. How sharp is he? Uh, if anybody can do it without practicing, it would be Tyron. Connor Williams at left guard. You know, I, I think he's going to be fine. He, you know, he's 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 starting to get better, but there's still, you know, he hasn't really hit, turned that corner just yet. Joe Looney, that's a that's a downgrade from Travis Frederick. But like Joe, like Dave said, I mean, not a huge concern. Zach Martin is Zach Martin, and then Cam Irving hasn't practiced a whole lot either, and that's a big drop-off. And my concern is who they're playing this week with Aaron Donald and the Rams on the other side. That's the concern. If it was another team, it wouldn't be as high. But going up, you know, playing it week to week and not knowing what we have from the Cowboys and knowing pretty much what the Rams are going to at least have in Aaron Donald, I would say seven to eight. 
All right, we're going to go and take our first break. When we come back, we got a couple other transactions that we got to talk about. Well, Derek, tell your number. Uh, if I had to give it, I would probably be with you and Nick around that seven. Um, and that's not so much. I, I don't even know if I call it. I'm not worried about it, but I am concerned. It's going to be something I watch very heavily in this first game, actually these first few weeks, because um, – and, and I do have a lot more concern, I think, than maybe you guys do on Cam Irving. I Just as, as I the, – the few times I got to see him practice – I just wasn't that impressed with him. And I think Lyle Collins is a really good right tackle. So I think you're taking a the, the delta between those two guys, in my opinion, again, just based upon what I saw in those few practices, suggests to me that there's a big difference between those two players. And, uh, and so I'm interested to see. Now, I do think that you look at this offense, this offense has a lot of playmakers. So getting the ball out quick and getting it into the hand of the, hands of the playmakers and letting them make plays, I think that's an advantage they have. Uh, so you may not see it show up as much on on uh, on film, um, but I, I am a little bit concerned about that right tackle position, and especially with him being out for a number of weeks here. We're going to go ahead and take our first break. When we come back, we're going to talk about a couple other transactions, Brandon Carr being one of them, Randy Gregor- Gregory being the other. We'll do that when we come right back. This is DallasCowboys.com Radio. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of ice. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride, too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. Stetson hats, the official crown of all self-respecting Cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today at shop.dallascowboys.com or at stetson.com. It's funny. As we travel places, often we find the places we want to travel aren't really places at all. They're people. They're grandparents, moms, old friends, and new nephews. That's why at American Airlines, we've been using enhanced cleaning measures so you can feel confident every step until you get to them. So as always, our people can't wait to take you to yours. American Airlines, you are why we fly. To the break. Welcome back to the second segment of The Break, live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. We appreciate you guys taking some time today to talk some Cowboys football with us uh, here on The Break. We are talking about the transactions that happened over the weekend. Cowboys make their final cuts to get down to 53 players. Uh, we talked about some of the areas where they had some interesting uh, moves. Uh, one of those interesting moves that we didn't talk about was Brandon Carr. A guy that Cowboys fans should be very familiar with. Cowboys signed him. Uh, He was a player on the team uh, years ago. Has been in Baltimore for the last several years. Been playing pretty well there. Uh, Was a free agent. And the Cowboys went and signed him and placed him on their practice squad. Which seems a little strange. And and so the first thing I want to do is before we get into the actual move. I'd love for for you, Nick, to break down for fans the, the, uh, the rules around uh, <laughs> I know you're laughing. The rules around the practice squad for this season, <laughs> because they are a little bit different to allow teams to have a little more flexibility with regards to COVID. So tell us kind of what, what that looks like, what practice squad looks like this year. All right, I'll do my best. Dave, jump in if, 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 I, if you've heard differently. Um, from what I understand, it's 16-person practice squad now. Um, I think it's six spots that can be any – um, experience at, at all. It, it doesn't matter what kind of, you know, how long you played in the league. Uh, there's six of those veteran type spots that you could have. Not that the Cowboys have used them all, but, but you, you could. And um, they have the ability to call up 
two players. This is where I'm a little sketchy. Dave, you might want to help me. Two players to the roster during the week to make it a 55-man roster. Uh, but then you, have to, you, then you have to put them back down um, at the end of the week. And you can only do that a couple of times for each player throughout the year. So Brandon Carr can be on the roster. He can actually be in the game and, and, and play this week. Uh, just because he's on the practice squad. That's the best that I know, Dave, Amber, you guys might have heard differently. Well, there, I mean, that's that's basically the gist of it, but I think uh, something that's really important to note, as far as I understand it, the 55 thing, that's a that's a weekend thing. So, like, on Saturday, you can decide to bring two guys to your game day roster, and that does, I mean, you still have to make seven inactives, so you just have more guys to choose from to do that with. Um, the other big thing is because of COVID, there's no, there's like no processing time. You know, typically you got to do this. You got to move a guy from the practice squad to the roster on Friday or Saturday to get him on the roster in time for game day. That's not a thing anymore. You can do, you can move a guy to the roster up to 90 minutes before mm. kick. And I think that's designed to help combat the possibility of a COVID outbreak. So you know, God forbid if four or five guys come down with COVID on Friday or even Sunday, uh, you can use the practice squad to supplement that. The other thing, and this doesn't really have anything to do with Brandon Carr, but uh, teams are allowed to designate up to four players per week who are immune to being poached. Like they are off limits. It's kind of like Big Brother. Like you give somebody like the team has the power of veto. You can just say, no way you can't touch these four guys and you can do that every single week so is that, that right that makes Eric, that makes that me, right? that that makes like me so proud that dave is referring to big yeah, brother right? you guys gotta know yeah. like i've been a big brother fan since it started i got dave hip to it what two years mm -hmm. ago maybe a year maybe even training camp last I year no like yeah last and, summer, and now yeah. he's all in he's he's referring to it on the break this is great i've so, never but it's a lot. It's a lot to, like, I don't blame anybody for being confused. Oh, one more of the dozen things is uh, the Cowboys have a special exception for Isaac Alarcon. I hope I said that right, Amber. Um, he's, he just, he's just on the practice squad. He can be there as a 17th guy as part of the International Pathways program. They don't have to worry about somebody poaching him. They don't have to worry about him counting toward the roster limit. So that's nice. So let's... But then you can only the this part is a little confusing. I don't know if you already mentioned it, but you can only promote a player twice before they have to go through the whole waiver or clear yes. waiver process. You can only take a guy. So if you want to expand your game day roster to 55, you can only do that with a player twice before he has to go Even through a the waiver system. So uh, I I believe so, but we probably need to double check that. It's it's pretty um, convoluted as I. <laughs> As I started looking through it, I was like, okay, I got tired head now. But, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's pretty convoluted. Yeah. But a lot of these rules are just really meant more than anything else to give teams options with regards to COVID. Like, if you get an outbreak, you now yeah. have a few more options to be able to get a – to basically field a team on a Sunday. And, and what I wonder about that is how many you're going to travel to the game now. I mean, because before you would never take a practice squad player to the game. Uh, but now you, you might. Yeah. And, and so it, it might – you might just take one per position. You know, if you have a couple of wide receivers on the practice squad, maybe you take one of those or one of your backs or, you know, you know, one of your cornerbacks. And so that's what, that's what I kind of wonder, uh, what, especially, you know, on these road games, you have a noon kickoff start. I don't, I don't know what the testing is going to be like um, on Saturday, Sunday. I, I'm not sure. I've heard three or four different things of – of if they're going to test on Sunday morning or Saturday night, I'm not sure. If you think about it, though, Nick, I mean, we all travel with the team during regular years. Think about how many people that typically travel with the team won't be doing it this year, whether it's members of our staff, whether it's uh, sponsorship people, whether it's, uh, you know, employees for TV stations that often travel with the team. Like, there should be a lot more space on that plane if it were me, yeah. I would bring I'd bring all 16 of them. Why not? I mean, you got to yeah. have the room. Well, and, and uh, here's another thing that I mean, it might be better to talk about off the air, but what's the plane look like? I mean, what is the protocol now on a plane? I mean, do you have two rows between people, one row? I mean, it's hard to social distance on a, on an airplane. And so I kind of wonder you know, maybe, maybe the Hawaii well, you're playing uh, plane football comes back. together. You're like all up in each other's face already. So what? 
sitting next to each other, what's the big deal after that, you know? That's yeah. true. I mean, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But let's talk about Brandon Carr yes. and, and Cal- oh. oh, yeah, Brandon Carr. I forgot. <laughs> Did you ask something, Nick? You know, yeah, well, I was going to kind of segue into the whole the Brandon Carr yeah. thing because about does this ma- does a call up for a veteran the same for a call up? I don't know if, the, if, if it really goes into place for a veteran, but let's remember this. You said Brandon Carr played pretty well at safety in the last couple of years. He was not he was not signed by any team all summer, all until just now. Same for Jadavian Clowney. You can you can mm-hmm. make that case. I get it. So, but I just I wonder how you know how great he really has been. I'm not saying great or good. He's just he's been a solid player. I think he, Brandon Carr his value is is goes greater than just how he plays on the field. I think he's a really good leader, good locker room guy. I, to me. I, I, he's the opposite of another player for Baltimore, I think, that they were trying to bring in. Now, that guy, Earl Thomas, is an outstanding player, seven-time Pro Bowler. Brandon Card, not as great of a player. But I think what the Cowboys need right now, versatility, leadership, experience, I think Brandon Card could help in, in those Yeah, players. when you think about it. Are you really needing – No, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, are you really looking or needing leadership right now rather than someone that can actually go in – and play and make plays, given the circumstances. You know what? That's leadership in, in its own way. This guy, I think this is an amazing stat, and I saw this on Twitter, um, that there are only two players in the history of the NFL that have started every game of their tw- first 12 years of their career, one of them being Peyton Manning, the other being Brandon Carr. Peyton Manning was expected to go in and play and start. Brandon Carr, fifth-round pick, Grand Valley State, to go in and start every single game, that's probably going to end this week. He's not going to start, uh, I wouldn't think, the, this week. But but I think it's amazing. What I'm saying about leadership, it's not just pulling the guy to the side and say, do better. It's a, it's preparing, getting your body, getting your mind ready to play, go in, learning the system, learning different roles. That, to me, is a way, form of leadership that, that other players can look to. Yeah, and I think the thing – go ahead, Dave. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. I, um, no, no, no. no I was going to say, no. I think the, the interesting part there is that you got a guy who is dependable first and, and foremost. As Nick was saying, he started all those games over those years. In a year like this, when you got COVID and, and that's your, your big concern, and you're putting him in the role that they're putting him, which is, hey, it, we literally might get to a Sunday morning and a guy that's been on our practice squad is going to need to come up and play. Would you rather have him do that or would you rather have some guy that – hasn't played for the last 12 years or hasn't had the number of starts that he's had for the number tw- for the last 12 years. And by the way, he can do it at two different positions. He can come in and play at cornerback. He can come in and play at safety. He can come in and give you relief at both. So I think Brandon Carr is the perfect kind of player. I'm actually shocked that he was still out on the street. And what it makes me think is maybe this was also part of his doing. He lives here in the Dallas area. So this may be a situation where he may have had some other teams that expressed some interest. And he may have said, look, I kind of don't want to necessarily go up to Cleveland. And I'm not saying Cleveland was one of them, but he may be like, I live in Dallas. This is an easy fit for me. My family's already here. We just will be in Dallas at our home, and and I'll be on the practice squad, and I'll play when I need to play, and I can jump in. We all know he's been playing for 12 years. Like We all know he is on the back end of his career. But in a season like this, I think his dependability and his versatility are the absolute best factors you can have for a guy like him that you would bring in to play in that role. Dave, did you have something you were going to say? I, I mean, I think you basically hit on all the pertinent points. I just, and I can't speak for the coaching staff, but I don't, I don't want to give people the impression. I, I don't think Brandon Carr is here to step in and, and be a starter at any position in the near future. I think, uh, you know, it sounds like Xavier Woods is going to be ready to go for Sunday. That's what Jerry Jones said this morning. I think they're going to give Darian Thompson a shot to be the other guy, at least for the time being. And I hate to bring this up because it wasn't good, but it reminds me a lot of when they went into the season in uh, 17 or 18, excuse me, without a without a true lead receiver. And it, it didn't work and they fixed it. And that's kind of my thought is if this is an unmitigated disaster after three or four weeks, then maybe they revisit. But for the time being, I think Darian Thompson's the guy. Brandon Carr can provide valuable depth at a number of positions. I think you're absolutely right, Derek. He lives like two exits up the interstate away from the facility. He's around the star all the time in the offseason anyway. He obviously still knows a number of guys on the roster. I just think this was a good fit. And another thing that I don't think you can underestimate is 
they got two uh, rookie cornerbacks who are in need of mentorship and leadership, and who better to do that than Brandon Carr? So I don't know if he's going to be a regular part of the lineup, but I think it's very, very good that, that he's around. Yeah, and I think you this. hit on an interesting thing there, Dave. If the wheels fall off this thing from the standpoint of the safety position, then if Earl's still sitting there, then maybe that becomes an issue, right? That oh. may become an option for the Cowboys. But Absolutely. right now, I think the Cowboys look at it and say, we like the young guys we got. We like where Xavier Woods and Darian Thompson are in their career. They're the kind of guys they are not really – you don't call them, you know, un- inexperienced guys. They have some experience. We think they're at the point where they're going to now take that next step. So we'll see what happens. And if it doesn't work, then you got that little pocket in your back. You got that little card in your back pocket that you can maybe pull out. Think I about mean, think about this. Sorry, Nick. I don't mean to cut you off, but just think about this for a second. They open. Yeah, I don't. I don't think Jared Goff is amazing, but they open with the Rams, which was like the best offense in the league two years ago. Then they got Matt Ryan and Julio. Then they got Russ. And then they got Odell and Jarvis Landry and all the stuff up in Cleveland. Out. Like they are, their secondary <laughs> is going to be tested. And if it sucks, they're going to have to revisit that conversation. So for all of you Earl truthers, I don't think you need to, you know, put a pin in that and just see where we are in a month. Well, remember this about about Earl Thomas and any veteran like that. Most of the time, this doesn't really factor in. But in a situation like this where nobody's really doubting if Earl Thomas can play, they're doubting whether or not he can get along with this team in the locker room and he's going to be a distraction. Is he going to – does he Does he love football to the point where he's going to make it, you know, this top priority and all that? If he's not, then they're going to – you know, people say that all the time. If it doesn't work, get rid of him. It's hard to do that in week one, you know, if he's on the roster in week one the way the rules are. If he's on the roster on this, on this day right now, then he, his roster, his spot is guaranteed. Next week, though, week two, if he's on the roster, he's here four or five weeks, it doesn't work out. You don't owe him all of those things that, that you might. So that might actually play a factor into this specifically with Earl Thomas because teams aren't sure whether or not it's going to work out or not. We're going to take our final break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about Randy Gregory, a guy that has been on this uh, team, I guess, as a as a player that was on the, the uh, commissioner's exemption list. But now he has been restored uh, to the team and, and can – uh, start practicing at some point in the next month, I think it is. We'll talk a little bit more about that, get some some idea of what the parameters are of his reinstatement when we come back. This is DallasCowboys.com Radio. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride, too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. Stetson Hats, the official crown of all self-respecting Cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today at shop.dallascowboys.com or at stetson.com. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of ice. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Back to the break. Welcome back. It is the final segment of the break live 
from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. I'm so happy to be back in the building on a regular basis. I'll be here every day. Cowboys break will be on at 1130 a.m. Central Time every single weekday. So make sure you join us here uh, so we can talk a little Cowboys football with you guys. We enjoy having you uh, and spending a little time with you each day. Uh, we've talked about the, the the roster and one addition to the roster that was interesting and I think a good thing for the Cowboys is the reinstatement or conditional reinstatement of Randy Gregory. Uh, Dave, why don't you tell me a little bit about what this means as far as when he can return to the team and, and maybe when he can start practicing and maybe when fans can expect to see him on the field. Well, he's with the team now. I actually, I thought it was surprising. I mean, he was, Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, he was at the facility yesterday, was he not? Yeah, yeah, I saw him yesterday, and um, we can talk about that here in a second, but but Dave, go ahead with... Well, yeah, with, well, the, I, I found it surprising, like Mike, Mike McCarthy and Mike Nolan said they haven't really had a chance to talk to him, which I thought was interesting because he was in the building yesterday. But anyway, so he's allowed back with the team, they have a roster exemption. He doesn't count toward the 53. Uh, the NFL is putting him through a mandatory uh, acclimation period, which part of me, like, I'm like, well, this just seems like a further suspension, which is BS. But at the same time, all of these other players, you know, they reported in late July and didn't, you know, they had a month basically. And Randy's been away from football even longer than they have. So it makes sense. Um, so he can start practicing on October 5th, which is the day after the week four game against Cleveland. And he can play on October 25th against Washington. So I think that's the seventh game of the season. Uh, so they won't have him for six weeks, but given how little football he's played over the last two years, he's probably gonna need that time anyway. Yeah, to, to clarify, he wasn't in the building when I saw him, and I'm not sure no. that, that that, okay. I mean, he was just outside the building. Um, and so, uh, he, again, he still could have talked to people, um, and I'm not sure if he did or didn't or whatever. I, I saw him very briefly. It you know, it reminded me, it doesn't happen to me a whole lot that the guy stands up and he just realized how tall he is. I, he is. He is the perfect guy for a 3-4 defense like this. If he's ready to play, he would be a, he's a great fit for this scheme because he's not – not that big. He's a little, you know, he's slender, but he's, but he's, he can bend, he can move, he can do those things. You know, this would be a good scheme for, for him, but scheme and all that stuff's kind of down the road. Get him back in here, get him, you know, testing again, get him playing, practicing, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I think he's excited about playing football. He, he showed more excitement than I've ever seen out of him just, just to be back and close. So hopefully this is a good yeah, thing. Yeah, it was interesting, Nick, you him. told me about your, your little encounter with him. Uh, and it was, it was interesting because at first you didn't recognize him, but it seemed like he, from the way you were talking about it, he was very excited to be back with the Cowboys and uh, excited to be able to start kind of getting back in there and, and getting some work done. Which – I guess I should be fair, Nick. That's a really good point. It actually, now that I think about it, it makes a lot more sense that Mike McCarthy and Mike Nolan didn't talk to him because he's got to go through all the COVID protocols. He probably was only there to get tested, and then he probably left again, if I had to guess. So he's not able to really, you know, he's not able to fully be part of it until he goes through those protocols, and I'm guessing that started yesterday. So, Amber. What are your expectations for Randy Gregory at this point, based upon uh, the fact that he's been out of the league for as long as he has, the fact that if you factor in what he was before he left, uh, where do you kind of grade him at this point, or what do you expect from him at this point? What do you expect from him at this point? I think it's the same expectations we had a few years ago when, when he was back and then we were trying to figure out how he was going to do uh, once he got to the field. And to me, he's one of those guys that – when people talk about rare talent, he has that rare, rare talent. That I don't know how you say it in English, innate, that you're just kind of born with it. He's one of those guys that I see that is able to just go, go out there and perform at a high level. Obviously, he needs to go through that, that whole period. But one of those, for example, you talk about Alden Smith. That was a guy that me, I didn't, I didn't have much hope. I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. Let's see how he does when he gets in here. And he completely impressed me the time that he was during this training camp, what he was able to do, how he looked out there, how he fit in with the rest of the group. So I think that Randy, with, with just his, his uh, positivity right now, and even the thing that he wrote on Twitter, the way he was speaking, and, and that whole outlook of being just 
kind of on the right path, that's going to help him a lot, not just on the off-field things, but also on the field. It's going to hopefully be able to translate. So I think um, he'll he'll do well. I just I hope that he's able to get opportunities and, and just mixed in there. The good thing is that I think that the Cowboys have a, a group a good group of guys that they can rotate and just get everyone in there to kind of bring their own Yeah, it's thing. interesting that you mention um that you mentioned Alden Smith because he actually has been out of football longer than Randy Gregory is out of football and quite frankly I, I think the the flip side to that is he was and I'm not I'm not saying anything that that I don't think most people agree with he was a better player when he left the game of football than Randy Gregor has been in his career. So, yeah, there's there's kind of good and bad on both sides of that coin of, yeah, you can see a guy return that hasn't played football in a while, and all of a sudden he's showing these things that, that you don't necessarily expect to see from somebody that's been out of football. But Alden Smith was a really phenomenal player when he left the, when he was kicked out of the league. He was a really, really great player, and we're seeing some of the shades of that right now coming back. Dave, tell us what you think as far as your expectations for Randy Gregor at this point. Uh, I mean, my, I, I don't want to say expectation. I, I hope that he's, you know, healthy and happy and has conquered these demons of his for the last time. And I mean, I, mean, I know that's a, that's a daily battle, but I hope it, he can do it and deal with that while he has a productive NFL career. I mean, as far as football, you know, Alden Smith and Everson Griffin kind of takes the pressure off of Randy Gregory to contribute anything right away. I mean, you got two guys who can handle those positions so I mean if he can mix in and get snaps he had six sacks when he was back here in 18 I mean he showed that he could do it even after time away so if he wants to chip in and do that that would be great but I don't I don't want to say I have super big expectations beyond just being a happy and productive member of the Nick team. what are your expectations your expectations well, I, I don't know if this was been, has been said, but you know, the expectations is for, that he will come in and and you know he, he he can provide some depth there. You got to remember, we keep saying things like, "Well, let's see if he can continue to you know stay on course and all that." The NFL rules are different now than they were before when he was playing there, and, you know, and so. I hate to say it, but some of the setbacks that he had and, and those obstacles, I'm not sure are the same right now. So you hope that, that he's clear and, and back and, and, and healthy and ready to go. But I'll, all I'm, I'm, I know I'm kind of dancing around the subject, but the rules are different than they were before. So maybe it will be easier for him and other players that have dealt with those issues to stay in the league and, and get the help that they need and actually, you know, be on the field every yeah, week. I think the one thing we, yeah. one thing I think we all agree on is that we're happy to see Randy back. We're happy to see him get this next opportunity. And hopefully, hopefully, as Dave said, he's in a position where he can take full advantage of them uh, and pass some of those demons or at least some of those demons that would preclude him from being in the league uh, in order for him to move forward with his career. Nick. They're sitting on their couch and they're like, oh, this guy, he doesn't care. He doesn't love football, whatever. How, he's making dumb decisions. Yeah, he's made some dumb decisions. If you talk to him for two minutes, you would be blown away with the, the, his demeanor, his character, his, his, his intelligence. His, just everything about him is not a guy that is making bad decisions. I mean, so he's easy to root for and 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 i think i speak for everybody when, when they they talk to him he's a guy that you want to root for you hope maybe you know this is this is the time and you hope and, and there's a reason jerry jones has not turned his back on him he continues to do that. that's the way jerry is but but he he sees something here uh because randy is is the type of guy that you you just want to root for which and, okay. oh sorry Derek. but i mean no that was that was so well said nick and the other thing, you know, we say this all the time. We said it. We said it a few years ago when Zeke was going through his off-field problems. Is obvious. Like line one is always going to be how good at football you are. Like if Randy Gregory didn't have rare talent, this saga probably wouldn't have drawn out as long as it did. But I always tell people like, listen to the people that are, and it doesn't have to just be us. Obviously, we're unique because we're in the building. But listen to literally everybody around the Cowboys. Find me a person who has dealt with Randy Gregory, who doesn't have glowing things to say about him, who isn't rooting for him. And I think, I think that's important, absolutely. Uh, because if, if, you know, if, if we thought he was a jerk or a lost cause or a bad person, 
I, I don't think you would see such uniform support for him from across, you know, the media and, and the people that work for the team. That's an interesting else. point, Dave, because I was going to say the same thing. I think you look at all the media guys that cover him. I've heard literally none of them say that they're not rooting for him and, and also talk about it from the standpoint that this is not just a guy who just makes bad decisions off the field. This is a guy that has some significant issues that he's having to deal with. And, and so I think from that standpoint, there is a really different perspective, I think, sometimes from the standpoint of the people that cover him and know him versus the people who are kind of just out in the, the regular part of society that may be just onlookers that have a different opinion of him. We appreciate you guys joining us. We're going to be back. Nick, do you have something real quick? I just want to say he's a really good football player. He needs to get better in his decision making on the field as well. If there is one thing about him, he he had a lot of penalties, untimely things like that. So discipline was an issue for him on and off the field. Let's see if if he's if he's corrected that in, in both areas. All right, we appreciate you guys joining us. We're going to be back tomorrow. Uh, I did let everybody know on Twitter today. Starting tomorrow, we're going to have a special segment. We're going to do every. Wednesday and Thursday, where we'll have we'll be joined by Bucky Brooks of NFL Network. He is a former player and a former scout. He'll come on and give us some insights on our upcoming opponents. So tomorrow he will talk about the Rams' offense. He'll take over Dave. Yeah, segment. We're, we're giving Dave a break because hey, Dave got too much on his plate. So that's Nick told me. I, that's yeah, Nick told me I better me. get some stuff off of Dave's plate so he can write. That's what he's hired to do. So well, that's what we're doing, <laughs> and uh, and we're gonna get we're gonna get Bucky in here to talk about the Rams' offense tomorrow. He'll talk about the Rams' defense on Thursday. Make sure you join us. We appreciate you guys joining us today for Nick Eatman, Dave Hellman, Amber Garcia. I'm Derek Eagleton. This has been the break live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this,